everyone, this is Andal and the Naturalist here with Cambridge Butterfly Conservatory. April is such an exciting month, isn't it? It's the first full month of spring, the days are getting longer and warmer, and for nature nuts like me, it's exciting because every day we get to watch for new signs of spring, migrating birds are coming back, the first insects are waking up and emerging, and there's new plant growth everywhere to watch for. April is also special because it's Earth Day where we get to celebrate the beauty and the wonder of our Mother Earth, but it's also a call to action for us to each act to preserve and conserve Earth in which we live in. And in our opinion, one of the simplest and arguably most rewarding ways that you can help habitat and wildlife in your direct neighborhood where you live is by creating pollinator friendly habitat. So for Earth Day this year, I thought I would take you on a short stroll through our pollinator garden show you some of the plants that are coming up, some of our favorite pollinator friendly plants, and share with you some tips along the way on how you can design and plan your own pollinator friendly habitat. So in the center of our pollinator garden, we've got this great circular focal point that is purple salvia around the outside, and there's a large patch of yellow black-eyed Susan in the middle. These are two of our favorite plants. They attract a wide variety of pollinators, butterflies, bees, flies, you name it. As you can see, we let last year's growth stand. You want to do this in a pollinator friendly habitat because that is habitat for overwintering insects and other small wildlife. And it doesn't impede the plants from growing up again in the spring. Eventually you can trim it down, but you want to wait till much longer into May when the days and nights have consistently been a lot warmer. Speaking of being a little messy, these are last year's sunflowers. That's another amazing flower. I've seen butterflies, moths, bumblebees, lots of things come to drink from the flowers. They're easy to grow, start from seed. The more sun, the better, because the plants that tend to attract pollinating insects prefer sun, but also the insects themselves like the sun. They're solar powered and they need to stay nice and warm to be active. As you can see, we also let these sunflower stalks stand because these are a great stem that maybe some insects could be overwintering inside of. And also it's a great natural bird feeder. All of the seeds that were grown on the seed heads, we had goldfinches and sparrows feeding off of them for a lot of the fall and winter. So that's another way pollinator friendly habitat. It benefits not just pollinators, but also songbirds. One of the first plants to come out and bloom this spring in our pollinator garden was the beautiful, almost dainty purple rock crest. As you can see, it's kind of a mounding plant. It makes these really cute clumps of purple flowers, which are one of the smaller flowers in our garden. And this is another important aspect to consider when planning pollinator friendly habitat. The more styles and shapes of flowers you can have will attract and offer food for more types of pollinating insects. So a smaller flower like this will be more accessible to a pollinating insect like a small bee or flower fly. Uh, that has a shorter tongue, whereas a larger pollinator like a swallowtail butterfly might find it easier to drink from a deeper, larger flower. So the more of those different styles you can have, it will offer more food for more pollinating insects. One of our other favorite pollinator friendly plants is sedum, which is a great later blooming flower. As much as possible when creating pollinator friendly habitat, you want to have food available for those insects all throughout the season, not just summer. It's great to have some early blooming plants in the spring through the summer, but also into the fall when there's not as much out there. This would be really um, an important food source for any butterflies or last pollinating insects that are on the air. So happy Earth Day, everyone. Thanks for joining me for a short stroll through our pollinator garden, where someday hopefully you can come visit it yourself, see it in full bloom. And we hope that you will strongly encourage creating or protecting pollinator friendly habitat that is in your neighborhood. So thanks again. My name is Andalyn with Cambridge Butterfly Conservatory. We'll see you next time.